everybody, Creative Katie, Karen Virgil here. Welcome to an art journal tutorial. This is part of the napkin series. To create this, I use two napkins and two stencils. Some of those are shown in the picture right here. Now this napkin I absolutely love. I got it from ninniesnapkins.com. There's a link below. I created this page earlier and I will put a link in the top right hand corner where the eye is. But I am going to use this one again. So I just had some of these already cut out from the last session. And I've had them stored. And, you know, I'm just playing with them. They're roughly cut out. They're not too specific. I'm just playing with the orientation, trying to get ideas, putting them on different size. Now, I've was gifted this in some happy mail from Paula and I noticed that the pink orchid is on both of them and very oriental kind of feel to it so I'm going to pair these napkins up they've got a similar color scheme similar motif so I'm just using a piece of masking tape painters tape and pulling off the two plies of white napkin and of course I save these because you can do things with these papers and you can check out some of my videos to see that. So I want mainly the Buddha and the orchid. I The background while it is I'm going to basically still stay in that color scheme I wasn't going to be using it specifically. So I'm water cutting and I'm using a liner brush and with very little water, just run it close to the edge and then rip it off. It's a slow process and I'm not going to show you the entire step. So now that I've kind of got it figured out, I'm again playing with the orientation. And what you're not seeing here is I also play with other sizes of art journal pages that I have to see which one works better. But, the, you know, the spray of orchids is, is a fairly substantial one, as is the Buddha. So here I'm going to do a little bit more fussy cutting, getting rid of the excess. Some people don't get rid of this. They leave it in and they decoupage it down. It mostly goes transparent. Um, my personal preference is to do this. I find this very calming and zen-like. There's a little pink butterfly here. I'm going to put that aside. It's going to find itself on maybe an ATC or something at some later date. And I keep all those elements in a basket uh, that I can use, you know, when I'm in the middle of creating. So I'm just getting rid of the background. Now I'm putting the paper underneath here because there's that glare my light is showing, but normally, you know, having the glass under works better because it doesn't absorb the water. This liner brush is an extra long one. I find it works even better. So now I'm finalizing the orientation. Now on the Buddha napkin, there were some Japanese or Chinese letters and so I'm just ripping those out because I think you know if I glue that down around in the background that would be a nice little motif that shows through. So that's what I'm doing right here. I'm gluing this down with my Liquitex Basics Matte Medium which is my favorite for decoupaging down napkins. And I put it underneath and I put it on top and I'm not overly concerned if I get wrinkles or this is perfectly smooth. I love the texture that using the napkins imparts to the page. So once that's dry, I am again taking my lead from the napkin and I'm going kind of yellow gold. So what I'm grabbing here is unbleached titanium and a very light Naples yellow. This is Artist Loft ye Naples yellow. I prefer the Liquitex Basic one, it's a little darker, 
but for this purpose, I didn't want to go full yellow I and I didn't want to go beige. So I'm kind of mixing them with gesso on the page. And I forgot to put my painter's tape across the top. So that's what you just saw me doing here. I'm applying with a makeup sponge, but you can apply this paint with your fingers or a brush if you'd like. I just want a base coat of color down at this time. And as always, I like mixing colors so that it isn't so flat and one tone. So even though there's not much difference between them, I like that variation. Now I'm grabbing this stencil. This is called Linked Tiles and it's from the Crafters Workshop. And both this stencil and the Orchid uh, napkin can be purchased from ninniesnapkins.com and there's a link and a coupon in the description box below should you want to check it out and i first put the just the same plain naples yellow then i grab my yellow oxide which is a darker yellow and stencil on that giving that some background color I'm using the Liquitex Basics Matte Medium, Fluid Matte Medium, and I'm going to glue down all my elements. And I'm not, you know, I'm embracing the fact that some of the stenciling may show through. I'm not worried about that at all. I'm going to get it done and solve whatever problems come afterwards. I'm just ripping that off. I didn't like the way that overlapped. I'm loving the pink and yellow and cream color. Now I'm grabbing my Ink Tense blocks and I have the, the tin of 72. Ink Tense blocks are ink, not watercolor, and they are permanent when activated and fully dry. So just like I would use a charcoal pencil, I'm going around with the kind of yellow oxide color. I matched, I have them all swatched out. And I'm just edging my paper with that darker gold color. And you can rub it on, then I'm just activating it. And it's just framing the page a little bit. And you can use your intense blocks in this way. Now I grab the pink that's similar to by looking at the swatch and I am just going to add some depth of color to all the orchids. Now you can do this with paint. Some paints are more opaque. The joy of or the benefit of using the ink tent, ink tent blocks here, one they're permanent and two they're very translucent. So it's like giving it a wash over and you know you're not going to cover too much of it. So I'm just intensifying the color and you can see compared to areas that I've done and areas that I haven't done, the difference. This is how I'm making this napkin my own. Some of the brightness disappeared because I have things in the background and I just wanted to brighten it up, bring it more forward. And I go on and I'll let it dry and then I come back and might add another layer of it. And you can see again, the difference. It's much darker, much brighter. Then I'm coming back with my angle brush and I am doing some highlighting with, I think I'm using my white gesso. It's what I had on my palette, but you can use white paint as well. And I'm just adding some highlights. Just going to make these orchids stand out, have a little bit more presence on the page. And again, I'm coming back. I let it dry, then I add another layer. Now, those uh, Japanese words, symbols, I wasn't really liking the way they were showing through. They didn't seem to really add anything in the way I wanted. So I'm covering them up with gesso and I'm going to let that dry and you'll see me 
what I'm going to do next. Just getting rid of what I don't like. And then back to the shading and the colorization of the orchids. I just love how that stenciling in the background looks against the orchid. Stencils are a great way to add interest to your background. Now, I just used a regular ac acrylic paint. I could have used thick gesso that was colorized if I wanted to. This is all somewhat flat. I had toyed with the idea originally of putting modeling paste on there. But sometimes less is more. And now it's time to colorize the other spray of orchids. I will put a link to a whole series that I did on using ink tense blocks in mixed media. There's a lot of information. I think there's five videos in total, total in the playlist. Lots of information, lots of ways that you can use it. Um, it becomes, it can be a very valuable tool or supply in your mixed media arsenal. Now I just want to brighten this one on this napkin. It's very faded, and I'm at editing the shape of it. Where it there was a cut edge, I'm just adding to it, trying to make it a little bit more the shape of the other one, and definitely make it a little bit brighter. If you don't have ink tense blocks, you can use watercolor. Uh, you could also use acrylic paint, and you've seen me doing that as well. I just like to give people options, and I know lots of people have reached out and asked about how to use ink tense blocks. So here I'm coming back in. I'm adding a little bit more pink after I've added the highlights, and I'm just building up the layers of color. And you can see the top one with has more highlights than the bottom spray and the difference. After giving that a dry, I'm placing the stencil back on and I'm just re-stenciling over the areas that I put gesso to get rid of an element that I didn't particularly love. So it's like that wasn't there. So there's always a ways to undo what you later find to be not a great decision or something that you don't like. Then I decide to grab my white gesso and white acrylic paint and just stencil over top. This is giving some layering using the same stencil, two different colors, it's kind of tone on tone. I'm loving, loving, loving the look of that. It's just adding just one more layer of interest. So adding the white also brightens the page, works well with the highlights that we've put on the on the orchids. And back to adding highlights to this bottom spray. You can see the difference from the top one and this bottom one. And I just want to get that same look on these other ones. 
So I'm going to continue with that. The technique that I'm using is very a lazy approach to um, floating acrylic. It's a great shading technique. Or highlighting technique, as the case may be. I really like how I've added to the orchids right on top of the Buddha. It's given them more presence. They were very faded before, and now they, in my mind, have come to life. Absolutely loving the yellow and the pink color combination here. Just doing a little highlights around the Buddha. I come back, I'm going to do some shading around her, it, 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 the Buddha as well. All told, this complete page took just under an hour. Now I'm using the Inktense block and I liquefied a little bit on a puddle and I'm splattering it with the pink. And then I have some yellow oxide that I was using earlier for the stenciling and I'm splattering with it as well. Once that's dry, I grab my woodless charcoal pencil, and I love this, and I am edging the outside with the black here. Now, the reason for this is the Buddha in the middle has the black on it, and I needed to introduce that elsewhere. So I'm just outlining this and then rubbing and smearing the edge. These woodless charcoal pencils, you can sharpen them with a pencil sharpener and get a finer point if you want needed to. But it's a quick way of edging here. I could have done the floating acrylic technique, but I like giving you guys options. So this is another crafter's workshop stencil. It's called Follow Your Joy. And I thought that was a nice sentiment to use. So I am masking off the parts of the stencil that I don't want. There's some florals and different things, and I'm not using them. I just want the words. So I'm just using the painter's tape and just to hedge my bets and not get anything that I don't want to get. Positioning it on the side here. Now I'm using a combination of black and brown and using a makeup sponge to apply paint. Now you have to be careful. I want this to be fairly precise. I don't want it to bleed under or soak under. So I'm being very careful not to put too much paint on it, tapping it off on the glass mat, not pressing too hard. And I absolutely love how that it all seems to flow and tie in together. And again, since I put the black on there, now I have the black around the page. All those elements were, are working together. And then I decide to splatter with the brown-black mixture.
I'm extremely happy with how this page has turned out. If you haven't followed me on Instagram, follow me at Creative Katie. Now here I am using General's Charcoal Pencil and it's a medium. They come in extra soft, soft and medium and I got all three together. And the medium is a little harder so it doesn't flake. It's not great like for edging. I wouldn't choose it to edge the page. But this will give me a line and I just want to kind of sketchily outline, add that black element around the orchid. Give it a little bit more definition than what's there. I'm not rubbing this at all. Like I said, I want that line, but I want it to look like it's charcoal or sketched out, not like marker and I don't want the dark shading. I like how the shape of the orchids matches the shape of the stenciling that I did in the background and that's one of the reasons I chose it. They, they both have that rounded, petally shape. That link tile stencil is a real basic in my stash. It reads vintage. It's very popular for, uh, you know, it works for a lot of different types of pages. Now, when you use charcoal, you may want to seal your page. It's not really important on an art journal page for in my world, but if this was on a canvas, I would definitely spray it with Spectrafix, seal it before I would put varnish. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this napkin journal tutorial. Give me a thumbs up, check the description box below for links to any of the products that you may be interested in. Ask me a question, give me a thumbs up, share with your creative friends. Keep creating.